what is good what is good good people so yeah this will be a quick one just want to send a quick uh, shout out recognition recog Uh, the channel J Chris uh, he's, he's really been killing it lately so check him out <clears throat> and then I wanted to share a little bit about uh, what I'm gonna play here with him and with uh, what one of his I think it was a super chat or whatever the fuck shared on here But, uh, yeah, so this one was, uh, Angels on Guard, which, at first, I was like, hold up, because, <laughs> uh, you think of angels and it's more of a lighter realm of the etheric nature where there's not really any kind of a guard because that higher frequency is its own guard because it's vibrating on, on such a level that um, anything wishing to take advantage of that is not going to be able to touch it. But how the, how this guy explained it was more getting out of the new agey uh, concept of angels and uh, more into engaging angels for yourself. E engaging them Engaging this high vibration and in so doing, having the realization that this is your shield, your guard, so to speak. Kind of, it's not really like battle angels. <laughs> you think of angels for the, you know, sword and shield. It, it, it's more, you reach, you've reached a level of clarity. And of self work of the inner the inner work that is uh, very necessary in order to understand everything that's going on within and without. So you reach a level to where. You could call this higher vibration, you could call it angels. But really it's just a recognition of the reality of, of what's really going on. Of, uh, you've touched upon deeper layers and You're able to see beyond, you know, things that potentially got you caught up uh, previously or uh, got you tripping on BS. So, so like saying like you know the angels got my back or, or whatever you want to say like it's the same thing as saying like you know I know the layers that exist in reality the all the vibrations because to know the high you have to know the low and 
like with this guy and, and kind of why he chose that uh, title was because he kind of shared some of his backstory and uh, the super low point that he was at in his life and uh, how now he's he's very thankful for that and um, a lot of times you know we're going to come out of our you know experiences that we go through that seem like hell whenever we're experiencing them but whenever we come out of them we, we realize we needed that like that that strengthened us and helped us wake up to kind of reclaim our sovereignty or reclaim uh a, a certain level of control or uh, wakefulness that was lacking before So yeah, a recognition, a realization of all of the frequencies, low and high, realizing that the choice and the observer and the awareness is crucial. It's, it's, that's the key to realize that you have a choice in every moment to choose how you want to react, how you want to engage, how you want to, yes, ultimately feel about something, but a lot of times, you know, whenever we're in the moment, the feelings are just going to happen, but the more awareness and wakefulness that we cultivate, the more we're able to allow these things to come and go. We don't hold on to things anymore, or at least not as much, and that's, you know, it's a process, but that's part of the process, is, oh, I have, you know, <laughs> part of, the, one of the things he's talked about was, uh, you know, if, if you have something, if you have a, a, a disorder or whatever they tell you you have, well, if you have it, that means that you can let go of it, so just let go of it, <laughs> and then you don't have it. And this is fucking exactly right. Oh, I have this and this. I have this disorder, this disease, this uh, sickness. Well, then let go of it. It's it, it's a choice. It's a mentality. And oftentimes, we don't choose. And so the the scripts choose for us. And by scripts, I just mean the people that we're taught to believe know better than us. And so that's what's shaping our reality. Because we have given up the choice to do so ourselves. And so the power is in your choice. The image you decide to create. The image that you decide to make real. And oftentimes, this is going to what's going to precede this is a feeling. And then choosing to continue to engage that feeling. And so if we're caught up within a certain feeling of maybe fear, of maybe what we've been told to believe in, that's going to slowly and surely create an image. Even if it's a... Uh, and oftentimes, with people that... Because most people don't create their own reality. They live in the scripts and the bullshit. It, it's a very loose image that, that has, because of the feeling, that just kind of sits there and festers. But whenever you could go to creating your own images, your own scripts, your own, frequencies and vibrations and choosing which ones you want to attune with then the more clarity happens it becomes a very a, a much more clearer image and then you will witness things coming together uh, synchronicities happening 
things aligning or whatever. <laughs> That's going to sound a, a lot, you know, new agey and whatever, but it's a mentality. You have to move past the mentality of, of new age, of uh, beginning to understand certain concepts, beginning to touch upon certain experiences, and then, and then letting all that go and just diving into it and redefining uh, reality for yourself through your own direct experience. Let, let the direct experience, let your experience be the teacher and learn from that. And that's going to be your greatest teacher is doing for yourself and learning from that. So yes, the power of the image, the power of art, the power of music, of creativeness, of s spontaneous flow. This helps re-enliven our natural state, our creative state. It helps realign us with, with truth and dissolve the fucking bullshits because we're on that vibration of, you could say, of the angels. We're on that high vibration to where we're just flowing. Thank you. I appreciate it. John the Seeker, we can win the physical space. We can win in the physical space. Uh, images are the way to win from in here. Yeah, 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 keep going. Photos, drawings, and symbols exist beyond time, even if we are in time. Love that, John the Seeker. Um, and thank you for your super chat as well. I love that. Yeah, I know. I, I agreed with SMQ really quick when he was like, we already lost this. Um, and I noticed afterwards, I was like, yeah, well, because it does, you know, you, you, could, you could see like, oh, okay, yeah, there. But nah, because I think that it's too, I think truth is too potent. It takes a lot. It takes a lot for them. Look at how much it takes. Vaccines, water, fluoride, um, uh, you know, food shortage, money shortage, um, uh, the chemtrails, uh, 5G. Uh, I, I, Look at what they have to inundate, you know, uh, including, um, you know, shadow banning. And uh, just to keep, keep it, don't notice, don't notice, to keep you just, uh, look at how much it takes. Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, to keep, to keep control. Because the human, the human vessel, the, the the being that we have been taught to, you know, to associate with uh, human, is so crazy powerful that it's going to take so much to. And, and really, the the key uh, to 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 make this work was create a mass amount of. indoctrinated, dumbed down people believing in a lie. And the more of that that they could achieve, the more the more powerful that image would be. And so the easier it would be for them to control more people. The the the, the majority of people. And then when you have a mass of people believing a lie, it's not going to take much for them to weed out the ones that still believe in truth, that still engage with truth, that remember the old ways. And then, you know, we, we've been at a point for a while now that for, for a long while, many, many, cycles and time periods where just 
throw throw a reason out there, you know, uh, put, stamp a label out on people that that are still engaging with with truth and reality and what's really going on, and then have a witch hunt. Oh, they're terrorists. Oh, they're witches. Oh, they're blasphemers. <clears throat> so yes, um, mainly like my message, my main message for for people has all has pretty much always been, wake up to what you are, like wake up to how powerful you are, and what I mean by that is, realize what you are doing in every little moment, in every little micro moment realize what you are creating what you are choosing deciding to entertain to engage to choose is real for you <sighs> the winds of change are blowing And the winds, they are, uh, they're very fierce as of late. And the storms are fast approaching. And how we choose to navigate these storms within and without are, are going to dictate our course for the rest of, uh, our beingness for the rest of the time, quote unquote time that we choose to be here. So the time for fence sitting is is gone. And you you can you can sit on the fence still, but but at least have a clear eye of what's really what of what's approaching, what's what's really going on. And even if you still want to sit on the fence, you have to make a decision. You have to choose which route you want to take here. Where you what do you, what do you want to believe in? As in, do you want to believe in what you've been told? Or do you want to forget all that fucking shit and have a clean slate? Start fresh, start new, engage for yourself, and let experience be your teacher. You have everything already within you. Listen. Listen to what's already within you. Clear your antenna so that you can pick up on all the vibrations and that you can choose which station you want to tune into. So yeah, I think tomorrow is the full moon, so uh, I want to invite, and this is something I've already sent out, you know, into the ether, like big time, so I've, I've already been sending out this message, but I'm just putting in the words here and then <laughs> sending it out on this denser level of communication, but uh. highly recommend that you moon gaze with this full moon sun gaze yes and then if you can you know the the moon and the sun is going to be right there 
around the same point in the horizon. So do both, sun and moon gaze, or moon gaze until the moon, you know, uh, goes below the horizon, and then turn around, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, sun gaze until the the sun sets, and then turn around and moon moon gaze as the full moon is rising. That's some pretty powerful stuff too. And uh, if you're so inclined, do so barefoot and uh, do some deep pranayama work while you're doing it. Potential, potentially uh, doing some uh, spinning around, you know, in place, both directions, clockwise and counterclockwise. Maybe even doing some headstands, just mixing it up, getting things stirred up and flowing and, and, and engage with the energies. So these are going to be some pretty, uh, they have been pretty intense, powerful, and healing. And I'm going to be sending my gaze to the moon as it is full and going across the sky here. So whoever else decides to gaze at the moon as well, uh, we're going to be connecting and feeling each other. And there's going to be a lot of us doing so. So I encourage as many people as possible to join in. So yeah. I'll feel you soon. Peace.